So let's make this example from the previous video a little more interesting. I'm going to do a wall true here. I'm going to console write line hello from main. And then down here, I'm going to uh, let's see, wall true. Uh, console right line. Hello from different method. Let's just see what happens when I control F5 this, run it. You can see here that the two, uh, the outputs being intermixed between the two threads, both executing concurrently. In fact, if we look at my task manager, you can see here that it's using up roughly 14% of my overall CPU power on my machine. Uh, and it also says eight threads here. We'll get into why that is a little later. But if I go to performance here, you can see I'm on a quad core. And of course, I have the screen recording uh, software going on in the background. I have my threads going on in the background. And the operating system is uh, uh, is free to schedule the threads on whichever uh, CPU, virtual CPU, or, or I guess I should say logical CPU or physical core CPU that it wishes. And so it just turns out the scheduling is like this. Even though I have these wall trues in here kind of burning up my processor. If I want to have a little fun, which I do, let's, um, let's instead of just creating one thread, how do I, I gotta get rid of this one here. Close this window here. I hit control C to stop that from executing. Uh, let's do, let's just do this. I'm gonna say four and I get zero. I guess we could just use, here, I'm going to type 4 and hit tab. There we go. I, I less than, let's see, i got a quad-core hyper-threaded, so i got to go 8, um, I++, plus plus, and then we're going to, in theory, we're going to create a thread uh, for every logical CPU in my machine. I'm going to delete that wall tree. I'm going to start each one, and then let's see what that does to my CPU. i got all this output. Uh, bring up the task manager again. You can see, obviously, I'm pretty much pegging my CPU now. Every logical uh, processor I has have is floored, uh, which is kind of nice. It's using up uh, all the power on my machine. So anyway, these are. Let, let's make this output a little more interesting because here I have hello from a different method, but I really can't tell which thread's doing what. So let me show you that second argument to the thread uh, constructor. Remember I told you in the previous video there's this parameterized thread start, there's also a thread start. Parameterized thread start, uh, if we take a look at that, I'm going to hit F12 with my cursor on thread there. And I'm going to hit F12. I'm going to click here on parameterized thread start, hit F12. And parameterized thread start, it's a delegate just like thread start, but guess what? It takes a parameter. Whoa. Hope that's not too deep. That's why we call it parameterized thread start. So that's the only difference. Notice the parameter is complete. <coughs> abstract it's obj ect it's arbitrary how we wish to use that so let me show you how we're going to use that i'm going to close these metadata windows now and i'm going to say object thread id and then i believe when i type so i say start i can pass in the parameters so i'm going to pass in i all right and what happens is when i tell this thread to start the thread uh, class will pass that that I here it sends it in as this abstract object so I could have sent a string in I could have instantiated an object with more complicated state and sent it into this method you know it's completely up to me what I want to do right now I'm just passing an int so I'm gonna say hello from different method and let's just concatenate here on the end not not I can't say I'm gonna say thread ID and since uh, two string is virtual that will print the proper integer number all right so hopefully i'm hope that's not too far out there oh that's going pretty fast though but you can see the numbers changing uh i'm going to control c on this window so i'll see we have a bunch of fives we have some ones and some threes and ones and fours now we know all these uh, threads are executing concurrently because i have enough cpu power to do that they're actually literally running all at the same time um, but they're fighting over the console window to get their outputs printed here and, and it looks like I'm not exactly sure on the details of the console window but looks like it allows it it services some and then services others and that sort of thing anyway a little more interesting example with threading hopefully you're starting to see that uh 
the major advantage to having threading is if you can break your work up into logical chunks and send a bunch of threads after it, then uh, you can get more work done faster. If you notice, we're not getting super fast CPUs anymore. For years, we used to they get faster and faster and faster. Now, we roughly have the same speed CPUs we've had for a long time. I mean, yeah, they're increasing in speed, but not nearly as dramatically as they have before. Instead, what we're getting is more CPUs. So it's up to us to break our work up into logical chunks and allow send all those CPUs at it at once. Anyway, we'll talk about that more in future videos.